What is a video game? It's just a set of problems. It could be anything. Civilization is problems in history. Halo's problems in a fantasy world of fighting. Chibi Robot is problems on how to, a four-inch robot could clean a house. It doesn't matter what the problems are. All a video game is is a set of problems that you must solve in order to win. You want to know what I do? Well, oddly enough, I'm by training a linguist, and I still work in linguistics on a field called discourse analysis, which studies how people mean things and make meaning. And uh, I only got into games and learning about six or seven years ago when I was helping my six-year-old play Pajama Sam and then wondered what a more adult video game would be like and went and got one, you know, arbitrarily, because I didn't know what to get, and was really just blown away how hard it was. But after I played a number of hours poorly, I really was fascinated by this cultural phenomena that people are paying for a long and hard and difficult thing that has to be successful in teaching them to play it because it'll go broke if it doesn't. And when I finally caught on to you know, the theory of learning behind video games, which I think is quite different than how we learned in school, uh, it became, uh, to me, a life-enhancing experience. Take uh, real-time strategy games, which are the most complex video games. A game like Rise of Nations has over 350 commands, essentially hundreds of variables interacting. You play it for hours, you run civilizations. I mean, it's just, it's just more complex than what any kid would see in school. We have evolved an almost perfect way to teach these incredibly complex games. So there are kids addicted to civilization, I mean, and yet civilization, I, I defy any adult to go play civilization, and they will usually give up in 20 five minutes. So let's talk about assessment because assessment and testing is what drives our current school system. If you're not happy with how schools teach today, they teach that way because of the tests we have. So we've come to realize we're not going to change the paradigm of schooling and get deeper learning in it, learning for problem solving and innovation unless we change the tests and change the assessment because they drive the system. Now here's a little thought experiment about assessment for anybody who's a gamer. Uh, we take it as completely natural that uh, you would be in an algebra class for 12 weeks and then I would give you a test on algebra, maybe one designed in some other state to see whether you learned any algebra. We take that as natural. We do it every day. So let's say a kid plays Halo on hard and, you know, he plays 30, 40 hours and he, and he finishes Halo. Would you be tempted to give him a Halo test? No, not at all. You'd say the game already tested him. So let's think, why is it that we're not tempted to give him a halo test, but we are tempted to give that algebra test and use that as the judgment? Well, it's because you actually trust the design and learning of halo better than you trust the design and learning of that algebra class. And I think that's where we're going. We're going to be able to create learning that is so immersive, so deep, so rich in information about the development of people in that learning space that the idea that we let some tests made in a different state trump what happens uh, outside of that learning will become primitive. We will see it as a very primitive thing. What I'm pushing is really not digital media, first and foremost. It's what I call situated and embodied learning. And what I mean by that is being able to solve problems with what you know, not just know a bunch of inert facts, but be able to use facts and information as tools for problem solving in specific contexts, being able to do stuff. Now, if you think about this, this is actually returned to an earlier age because in the 18th and 19th century, most scientists were amateurs in the sense they didn't have credentials, they didn't work for universities. Darwin never worked for the university. Um, he was, you know, uh, could take care of himself and he did his science. And, and people wrote letters. I mean, instead of journal articles, they wrote letters to each other and they did science together and they helped each other and they mentored each other. Schools in America, for the first time in history, have genuine competition. And that's because companies, large and small, are selling 24-7 learning customized to you in your learning style uh, outside of school. And you can learn didactically or in, in performance-based, any, any way you want. It's customized to you. Uh, some people are doing it for profit. Uh, so we have a, a curriculum and a school system out of school now. And it's in community centers, it's in libraries, it's in privileged homes. And it's based in this digital learning and also in the situated, contextualized, problem-solving learning, learning where you can do and articulate your knowledge. And uh, it's making some of our skill and drill schools look bad. 
that uh, system is going to put pressure on schools and it is it is already operating by deeper forms of assessment that are built you know where the assessment is integrated with the learning where it's based on copious information and where it's used to customize the learning back to you as well as to give information across all the stakeholders so they can resource the learner it's a new phenomena where we really have two school systems. We have a school system for the 21st century in popular culture where people are thinking about complex systems and learn, you know, kids are producing their own knowledge, whether it's about the weather or robotics or machinima or digital media. Uh, and uh, then we have a school system that's basically giving you the basics of numeracy and literacy. And uh, that pressure, I think, will bring about real change.